Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley stressed that the restoration and reopening of the Red House isn't a vanity move, but rather one which seeks to instill a greater sense of pride amongst citizens. This parliament represents us as a people, especially in so far as we have agreed to accept democracy as our system of governance and all that it portends for us in our way of life. Dr. Rowley said citizens must also accept and be cognizant of the fact that the state the Red House was in prior to its restoration was shameful. We also must accept a sense of shame that we have allowed this building to have been in the condition it has been for so many years. But today, we can accept the fact that we have done what we have needed to do if it took four governments or uh, administrations to get it done. We've got it done. Also delivering remarks on the reopening of the Red House was opposition leader Kamla Pissad Bissessa. She praised all the administrations past and present for working towards the building's restoration. I think it's very noteworthy that work on this Red House has spanned four administrations, starting way back in 1993 under the then Prime Minister Pandey administration when emergency works were done. This is recorded in a Joint Select Committee report uh, sometime in or about March 2010. Thereafter, work was continued under Prime Minister Manning's uh, administration and then under the administration I led and continued under the administration of Prime Minister Rowley. So we have spanned four generations. I think we need a, a good round of applause to acknowledge the work that has taken place over so many generations to bring us to where we are today. To this end, the Prime Minister said it was only this week that Cabinet approved restorative works to commence on Queen's Royal College. Following the address by both leaders, Speaker of the House of Representatives Bridget Anison George moved a toast. And I now ask you all to raise your glasses to the Red House. Charlene Lewis, TTT News.